Today we're walking through my entire photo editing workflow. We're talking everything from importing photos to Lightroom to the best settings to export as. I'm walking through all the details so you don't want to miss this one. Hey there, if you're new here, my name's Chris. I'm teaching you photography and how to start a creative business. I want to say a special hi to all my new subscribers. Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm diving into my editing workflow. What happens after a photo shoot and you have a full memory card of photos? Those photos have to get organized, sorted, edited, exported. A lot has to happen. I want to dive right in and talk through everything I do. I actually just finished some client photos back there. So I'm going to walk you through everything that happens after this. First things first, we got to take this bad boy and transfer these photos to our computer. Let's go. When we open Lightroom, we're agreed with this screen right here. We're in our library module right now, and we want to go down here and click import. If you don't see this import, that probably means you're in the develop module or your memory card isn't being registered. So go down here, click on import and click on the memory card folder you want to use. Now let's scroll down and find the first photo we wanna import. What I do is I usually click uncheck all right here and then click on the first photo I wanna import and then scroll down to the last photo I wanna import which is right about, right about here and shift click on this photo and finally check this box and then it's gonna select all the photos within this uh, shift click area. Go up here to your previews. I always do one-to-one. -one. Um, it kinda depends what your computer can handle. So previews are what Lightroom edits. Lightroom is a non-destructive photo editing software, which just means it doesn't edit the raw file. Instead, it builds a preview, which it then can edit. So we need to build these in order to give Lightroom something to edit. If we go here, you can see minimal previews and standard previews. Um, minimal previews, these are smaller versions that you can't really zoom into. One to one are the big versions that you can zoom all the way into and see all the details. These are probably gonna be dependent. Which ones you build is gonna be dependent on what your computer can handle. And no matter which ones you choose here, when you export the photo, it's still gonna be the highest quality. These are just what you're playing around in, in Lightroom. So go ahead, select one, one to one here. I like to rename my files. You don't have to do this. I have a uh, shoot name and sequence. This will just name them as un Untitled Shoot and 001 and so on. I don't touch anything here. Over here, this is where it imports. I just default this to the current day and go from there. So let's import them. Lightroom imports those photos and builds previews. All right, so our previews are done building. Everything is good to go. What I do next is I go ahead and rename all the files. I select everything in here and then hit F2. And then we can select the client name. So I'll just do client and then I do the date. So today would be 05, 20, 21. What I do then is just hit okay. Now we can see what, what these are gonna be renamed to. So we have client, the date and the sequence. So I say okay. And now all the folders, all the photos are renamed to uh, whatever you want. So I like this one just because at a glance, I know exactly who it's for, the day it was shot on, and then the sequence number for reference. After we're done renaming, I go ahead and rank all the photos. So there's a few ways you can um, filter these. You could do flags, which your options are, you flag it, it's unflagged, or it's rejected. And then the other option is stars. So I usually do a combination of these. So I'll use the flags to make sure that the photos are technically correct. So if the photo looks good and it's in focus, then I'll give it flag as a pick. So that's just PMI keyboard. If I notice like the label or part of the photo is off focus, I'll go ahead and hit X on my keyboard and set it as rejected. So let's go through just a few so you can see what I mean by this. A lot of the time, you're not gonna run into issues with focusing unless you're taking photos like outside or using manual focus a lot. So for this set, they're probably all gonna be in focus. So we're gonna skip this flagging part. If you were taking photos outside, maybe of moving subjects, or you don't really have your camera settings dialed in correctly, then these are gonna play a bigger role. Next, what I would do is I would star the photos. So the first go around, I usually will give a photo one star or zero stars. And this is just super fast, just my gut reaction of the photo. So let's, okay, I like this one, that's one star. I like this one, another one star. Uh, label, top of the valve's cut off here. Let's not use that one. It's still cut off, so zero. One star here. Okay, this looks good. One star, one star, etc. 
All right, so I've one starred all the photos I like. I click filter up here and select one star and now it's only showing the one star photos here. Uh, we could reset that and now we have all the other photos again, but let's go with the one star for now. After this, I go, I go through these again and now I do either one star or two star. So this is just a way to narrow the photos down even more. So here I have like these two photos and they both look pretty similar. Um, I'm gonna go with this first one and two star it and not do anything with the second one. Do the same thing here. We could give this one two stars. Here we have two similar photos. You can see one has like this plate, one doesn't. Um, I like the plate, so we'll do two stars there. And you can see how this starts to narrow down your set of photos. You can probably tell by now that this ranking part is a really time consuming part of your photo shoots. So if you take a lot of photos, it's gonna take you a while to rank them. If you take less photos and you spend more time in the camera, it's gonna be easier to rank them because you'll have less of them. Okay, so we got these. Um, let's say the client only wants one photo in all. So let's give one of these photos a three star ranking and that's gonna be our favorite photo that we share with the client. You know, I like the foreground here, the background here is blurred out. We got this harsh light here, but I think this is a three-star photo and we've selected our three-star photo here now we can start editing i'm sure a lot of you have seen my uh, lightroom tutorial video but if you haven't you can click the link here and that goes through like in-depth editing techniques for this video i'm just going to do a quick edit because this is more about my workflow not really about how to edit you know this is a really fast edit normally i spend a lot more time on these since they're um, really important client photos. Let's go down here and click enable profile corrections. You know, for this one, you might want to denoise it a bit. If you zoom in, you can't really tell there's any noise, but um, next part of the workflow after we're done in Lightroom is to go to Photoshop. This label, there's a few things wrong with it. Um, there's like small imperfections like there. There's like little scratches on the bottle. So we're gonna have to take those out, scratches up here. This glare, we're, we might have to deal with as well. Um, but I'm gonna show you what I typically do in Photoshop. So let's hit Command E on our keyboard and that's gonna open up Photoshop for us. We got verifying Photoshop right there. All right, so we got Photoshop opened up here. Pretty standard proc photography workflow here. We're gonna duplicate the layer. And from here, we're going to select our uh, spot healing brush, kind of go in and um, remove these imperfections. So I usually start with this spot healing brush tool. And um, this one's smart, so it kind of guesses what it's supposed to look like. Kind of just paint over all these like scratches up here because we don't want to send this to the client because they're gonna be using this on social media. They might be printing this out. So you want their product to look as best as possible. All right, so after we're done, we're gonna hit Command S on our keyboard and that's gonna save the photo. After this is done saving, it's actually going to pop up in our Lightroom catalog. Using Photoshop and Lightroom together is really powerful and it helps you stay organized because you don't have to go looking into random folders for this file. It's gonna stay in your Lightroom catalog. So now we have this TIFF version of the file down here and we can go back to the original file over here. So you, you can see some of these scratches have been removed. Small things, but it makes the photo look that much better, you know? So after we've got the final photo that we're happy with, we can go ahead and export it. So this is the next part of my workflow. We're going to do Command Shift E and pick where we want to uh, export it to. Let's do um, full resolution here. To do it in full resolution, just scroll down here and hit quality all the way to 100. Make sure none of this uh, sizing is checked and you should be good to go. I have a full video on how to export for Instagram. So check that out if you're interested in the best settings for Instagram, you know, cause if you do full resolution, Instagram is going to cut that photo, crop it down, kind of make the resolution grainy. It's not gonna look great. So I have a video discussing Instagram export settings that I think you'll find helpful. Next, we can choose our export location. Let's just go in here real quick. Um, we're just gonna create a new folder that could be called um, YouTube Workflow Video. Create that folder and with the files gonna get saved there. Hit export, wait for it to export up here. And once it's exported, you can do whatever you want with the file. Share it on Dropbox, airdrop it to your phone, sending over to clients, you name it. The final part of my workflow is backup. So backing up, 
your photos is really important. So typically after I fill up a memory card, I will go into my hard drive folder. I have a G-RAID and I have lots of, what I do is I have a memory card folder that has all my cameras and the memory cards on there. So this is my Sony a7R4. This was shot on the a7R4. So I would create a new folder here for that memory card and just give it today's date, 21. Open that up, go into my memory card and just select all the files on there. Command A, Command C, and then we can transfer them here. And then once those are done transferring, now we know that the memory card's backed up and I can format it and delete everything. After that's done, I know I have two copies of all these files, so I feel pretty good. And in addition to that, they're on Backblaze. So they're backed up to the cloud, so I know they're all uh, nice and safe. So that is my photography workflow. Uh, we talked about importing, renaming, previews, editing, exporting, and uh, backing up. These are all really important steps. My workflow is kind of unique to me, but everyone has their own sequence to do things in. And some people leave out certain steps. Some people don't back up. Some people don't use the cloud. Some people just leave their photos in Lightroom and rarely export them. Everyone's workflow is going to be unique. This is what works for me. Um, I'm sure you're going to pull parts of this video and find something that works for you. Um, if you found this helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I'm really happy that you watched and that you're trying to get better at photography. That you're trying to get better at photography business. That's what my channel is here for. If you found value in this, please subscribe. I'm dropping new videos every week week. I uh, usually want to do videos a week, depending on how things are going with my client work, how much time I have for YouTube. YouTube is not my full-time job, so I can only allocate so much time for this, but I always appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one.